Hi, I'm Ellis George, uh, play Courtney Woods, and you're listening to the Five-ish Fangirls podcast. The Tedges is we continue all the way to episode 446 of the Five-ish Fangirls podcast, dating. Oh yes, I don't know that word because we didn't do that in my day. We met someone, then married them, and got on with it. Welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Five-ish Fangirls podcast. So glad you joined us. Let's start off like we do every week on the virtual table and see who's joined us this week. This is Holly from Wisconsin. And this is Rachel in Indianapolis, Indiana. Hello. Hello. Unfortunately, we are just going to... Until spring gets here, yeah, all the flu season is going to be our biggest enemy. <laughs> yes. Oh, big time. Big time, big time. Yeah. Chrissy's fine, but Jared is sick and therefore cannot watch the kids. <laughs> so. Yes. <laughs> and more. hopefully neither the kids nor Chrissy catch whatever Jared has. Yeah. So thankfully I didn't catch what Chauncey had like last week. So... Which and I have knock on, enough issues and, with my sinuses as it is. So, yeah. And knock on wood, I have been so far so good. Or if I have caught <laughs> something, it's been on days and we haven't, and I've had a chance to recover. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just the, this time of year is just bleh. no plan so. <laughs> Yeah. You're fine one day, and the next day you wake up and you're like, ah, my the head's on fire and my. I yeah. can't feel my toes. And, what uh, semi truck? I did get a, I, I did have a twenty four hour stomach bug the end of last week, so I have not been completely in the clear. But thankfully, it was that just that a twenty four hour stomach bug. Yeah. So. But yeah. Ooh, so we shall soldier on. Let me try to yes. I woke up this morning and it was negative seven and I was like, hell no. Yeah, same here. <sighs> same here. But then by next oh. year we're supposed to be back up in the thirties and the twenties, so yeah. 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 All right. Well, first up, Zin News. So Gen Con for those planning on attending this year. Got some things you need to Write down on your calendar, starting with badges. Badges? We don't need no stinky badges. Um, in this case, you sure about that? Badges. For Gen Con, you do. <laughs> they are very particular. Uh, you can't even like hang out in the hallway without a badge. Um, maybe in the hotels you can, but not over the convention center. They're very particular. Uh, so badges go on sale at noon Eastern Standard Time on February 11th. So current pricing is on the website um, and that includes all the iterations of badges they offer. So single day, four day, trade day, kids, all that fun stuff. So and the sooner you order, the sooner you potentially have them mailed to you if that is an option to you um, because uh, the will call line is stupid. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> stupid as in stupid long and stupid crazy. <laughs> yes. exactly. so, I would highly, highly recommend get your badge ASAP. So, unfortunately, I do not have the option of having it mailed to me because I have to go and prove that I am who I say I am, as far as press credentials are concerned, so. We'll just take my you word for it. Uh, you think there'd be some sort of electronic verification with your badge, you just, one you time. You think, like, put my driver's license on file or something. Right, yeah. <laughs> oh. oh, well. Yeah. Uh, so there is that. Um and then uh, housing registration begins at noon Eastern on February 25th, which, of course, that is a big deal. Um, mm -hmm. The hotel rooms. It's always Find your roommates accordingly. 
Yes. <laughs> well, it is always just like the housing, you know, people get there. If you're registered, you will get a, a time, a block, a window to go into the housing portal and try to book your hotel. And mm -hmm. people do this and always in the Facebook group on the first day or two when housing opens, people are like, oh, my God, everything is sold out. What am I going to do? And it's like, if you're not in a hurry, wait and people will cancel. Because a lot yes. of times people will book multiple figure out roommate situations and mm -hmm. then cancel bookings. So if you don't get it on the first day, it's not the end of the world. So don't panic to yes to borrow a phrase from another fandom. <laughs> yes, grab your towel and just chill mm -hmm. and eat yeah. some fish while you're waiting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And then uh, event registration for ticketed events will open at noon Eastern on May 19th. And of course, the catalog for that will go up sometime before that. Just don't have a date for that yet. So, so yes, Gen Con. You hosting any panels this year or no? I don't know. I might. I might. We shall see. I've never actually submitted anything to Gen Con before, so I need to look into the gotcha. process. Gotcha. I, I just might. So, but there is that. All right. And now we are getting really into the weeds with award season. So, yes, it is upon us. <laughs> yes, the Critics' Choice Awards were last night. Um, which um, Oppenheimer won Best Picture. Surprise, <laughs> surprise. For the second week in a row, because it won <laughs> last week, too, the Golden Globes. Uh, so um, Paul Giamatti won for Best Actor over Killian Murphy from Oppenheimer. So that could be an interesting thing, because a lot mm -hmm. of these are... Similar winners to the Golden Globes of a Stone, one for Poor Things, Robert Downey Jr. won for Oppenheimer. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Divine Joy Randolph won Supporting Actress for The Holdovers, um, which she had won the Golden Globe for. Um, uh, the, the, the Critics' Choice, they do have some in, uh, an interesting uh, categories that yeah, you know, the big ones don't have. Uh, they have best young actor, actress, <laughs> mm -hmm. acting ensemble, um, which went to Oppenheimer. Uh, Christopher Nolan won director for Oppenheimer. Uh, Barbie won best original screenplay. So Barbie got way more love this time around than she did at the Golden Globes. Cool. Um, Oppenheimer won cinematography. Barbie won production design. Oppenheimer won editing. Barbie won costume design. <laughs> Barbie won makeup, Oppenheimer won visual effects. Uh, they do have a best comedy category. Barbie won for that. Spider Man Across the Spider Verse won for animated feature. Um, I'm Just Ken won for best original song, mm -hmm. which I love. Yes. <laughs> because there is now a GIF going around of <laughs> Ken himself. Uh, realizing that well first of all they said he was going to go up and accept the award which is dumb it's like he right. sang it he didn't write it uh, which right. thankfully he understood that that was not his opportunity to take the spotlight away from the writers so he let the songwriters go up there but I love the gift that's going around it's like Ryan Gosling realizing he might have to sing this song at the Academy Awards <laughs> yeah. oh crap <laughs> <laughs> Which, you know, yeah. if Peaches gets nominated, we're going to have Jack Black singing Peaches at the Oscars. So exactly. I, I, was think, I was thinking the same thing. Because I was like, okay, d does does Super Mario Brothers and that fit into this category, this time frame or not? Yep. <laughs> yeah, no, you just told me yes, it does. Peaches, so. Peaches was nominated for Best Original Song. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it is absolutely possible that Peaches could be nominated for best original song and start Jack prepping be... now there jack <laughs> he would he's he's down for it though that's the thing <laughs> oh, yeah. i don't know about Ryan I know. 
but uh, I, I, I'm thinking Jack Black. Jack if he Black did, totally down for yeah. singing. I think I think he would pull an Elton John, but Probably. instead of being in the Donald Duck suit, he'd be in the Bowser outfit. Probably. <laughs> I could just see him doing that. Probably. Probably. I'm here for it. I'm totally Me here too. for it. Oh God, I got tears <laughs> about it just thinking about it. <laughs> Woo! Oh. So. Um, and then Ludwig oh, Gorenson Academy. If you have these spies yeah. listening, please and yeah. thank you. <laughs> well, we get our we get nomination. We get our nominees next week, so we will find out. <laughs> so, we don't we don't have to wait too much longer. Another week and some change. See. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Ludwig Gorenson won for best score for for Oppenheimer. Um, and then the. Uh, Critics' Choice also include TV as well, which pretty much a repeat of the Golden Globe succession. Uh, took uh, a bunch for drama uh, series, although <laughs> appropriate for this week's show, Elizabeth Debicki won again. Nice. Trail is Princess Diana in the Crown. So yeah, she should. Yep. So, um, yeah, comedy series. Um, the bear one. <laughs> so, just, just show a show about a restaurant, a guy running a restaurant. Yeah. Uh, I, I've seen bits and pieces. So, yeah. Um, but in uh, best best supporting actress of the comedy series, Meryl Streep won for Only Murders in the Building. <laughs> yes, represent. And FYI, for those of you who get regular ABC, they have they have been running season one. I'm hoping they'll mm-hmm. continue and run season two. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yep, that's it. I'm watching just so we get more more numbers. Yep, more more opportunities for yeah for the more goodness people to realize is. just how amazing the show is. So. Exactly. Yep. So, and then we have our SAG nominations, mm-hmm. uh, which is going to be the last. Uh, where's my? Where'd my paper go? Where's your cheat sheet? Oh, yeah, here it is. <laughs> Put my microphone on top of it. So the SAG yeah. awards are going to be the last awards ceremony we get before the Oscars. Okay. So they are going to be on February twenty fourth on Netflix of all places. Interesting. Um, yeah, we actually have a bit of a gap in between the last award ceremony and the Oscars. On like last year, where it was a quick turnaround between the BAFTAs and the Oscars, right. we get several weeks in between SAG and the Academy Awards. So, um, but um, you know, uh, not a whole lot of surprises. You know, Best Picture, Barbie, Killers of the Flower Moon, Oppenheimer, American Fiction, Color Purple. Uh, a lot of the same uh, acting. Uh, Emma Stone for Poor Things, Margot Robbie for Barbie. Uh, the same ones for actor Bradley Cooper, Maestro, Paul Giamatti, William Murphy. Um, so. Uh, if, if he keeps this up, we could be seeing Robert Downey Jr. win an Oscar. Ah! Oh, that would be so <laughs> nice. He keeps this momentum going. Mm-hmm. Oh, that would be amazing. That would be glorious. Yes. Um, SAG also covers television. Um, so we got The Crown. Yay. Um, yes. Gilded Age, Last of Us, Morning Show, Succession. I'm sure Succession will take everything. So. Um, yeah, not really anything super surprising with the SAG um, awards. I you know, and I expect probably the same the same winners. <laughs> so yeah, um, for a good chunk of these. So um, um, uh, I do like the SAG SAG awards. They do have an award for stunts. Uh, yes. So both for film and television. So, 
uh, Barbie, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, Indiana Jones, The Dial of Destiny, John Wick Chapter 4, and Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. Uh, and then in television, Ahsoka, Barry B, Flass of Us, and The Mandalorian. So, yeah. so yeah, we've got uh, we are well into the weeds when it comes to um, awards. Um, actually, uh, speaking of BAFTAs, the BAFTA nominations are going to be announced this Thursday as we're recording this. So, the 18th. And then we get Oscar nominations on the 23rd. Mm-hmm. So, and then the BAFTA awards are on my birthday, the 18th of February. So, nice. and then the SAG awards on the 24th, and then the Oscars are on March 10th. So, should be a good good time so yes there is that uh and again speaking of awards and the like we have this month's gold standard patreon episode for those supporters and we did the greatest showman nice so, which made for a very interesting discussion because anytime you talk, anytime somebody makes a film about something historical that actually happened or about someone who actually lived, yep. you always is always call for an interesting discussion on it's like where do you draw the line of being extremely historically accurate but maybe not that entertaining right. versus making it more entertaining for the people whose butts are in the seats, but ignoring actual history. So. Uh-huh. There, and it's a very fine line. Yes, it is. Yep. Um, so, but if you are a Patreon supporter uh, for Gold Standard, you can go listen to that. And if you're not, go become a supporting. You can listen to that along with our back catalog of mm-hmm. other stuff that we've covered so all right feedback awesome. feedback from Shalane. she says hey Yay. girls welcome back Thank here's what i have you. to say about the golden globes first time since spirit away that miyazaki wins an award let's see if boy and the heron get nominated for for an oscar it probably will no offense to Disney, Pixar, Mario, and Spider-Man. I love them. <laughs> Super Mario Brothers, Elemental, and Wish, and Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse were great. But I think Studio Ghibli needs more spotlight. Mm-hmm. They've got... So, Studio Ghibli is one of those where it's like, they're not necessarily like big, flashy, win everything, but they do enough solid work that they have right. a steady throng of supporters. Yes. Yes. And it is nice to see them get recognized as well. Yes. yes. Yeah. But since the strike is over, I hope Disney and Pixar films will get back to being better like they used to be before the pandemic. Disney Animation is taking a break this year, and we only have one Pixar movie coming out this year, and that's Inside Out 2. That and the Pixar movies take a long time to make. Uh-huh. They're, they're usually... By the time we see them in the theaters... They've been in production for like two, three years, even with the advancements in technology, as far as doing the the 3D, you know, the three-dimensional animation that, you know, obviously Pixar's known for. Um, it's still a lot of work. <laughs> Those films uh-huh. take like a lot of work, a lot of time, and a lot of people involved. So, um, so yeah. So we, it, because of the pandemic and because stuff got halted, yeah, it may be a, a year or two before we start seeing like a bigger influx of stuff, animated stuff. So, but going back to Studio Ghibli, Florence Pugh presents the award for best animated animated feature, and she was in that film. I have seen videos of award shows where the actor is present is present presents the nominations for the category, and that film got gets nominated and the actors are in the film that's been nominated. Yeah, it happens. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's exciting well, it's cool Barbie. Too. Yeah. <laughs> it's exciting that Barbie won OG song in Best Box Office. Yep. So that's funny that Barbie has won 
best original song at two different award ceremonies, but for two different songs. <laughs> now we just need yeah. Dua Lipa to win for her song, and then all three of the songs that were in Barbie will have won. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Uh, since gold standards almost caught up, I will find out what you will do once you're all caught up. Probably talk about films uh, on your Patreon. You will find out. You will find out. I'm not sure if Nick is... I don't know, because we're recording CODA this week, which is the second to last film before we're caught up. So I don't know if Nick plans on us explaining what we're going to be doing in the future with this episode, or if we're going to wait till everything everywhere all at once. So I'm leaving that up to Nick. So he's he's uh-huh. got the he's got the wheel on that. So yeah, we're still we're still going to continue Patreon though. So we will still have a Patreon pick every month, aside from what we will be doing in the main feed. So so don't 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 be worried. Like oh, I'm not a Patreon supporter. I'm going to miss out. No, you're still going to get regular content from us. I will give you that much. So. Uh, she says other films that are going to be celebrating their anniversary this year are Big Hero 6 and Muppets, Muppets Most Wanted. So. And again, I'll be patient for this year on the musicals you girls are going to talk about. <laughs> Thank you for your patience, Julie. <laughs> Thank you for your feedback. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes. Uh, and then some feedback from Aaron. Aaron said, Ooh. Aaron, health and safety, gin and tonic division. <laughs> <laughs> love it uh, I hate gin uh, <laughs> vodka and tequila yes whiskey sometimes depends on what it is gin ugh, no uh, that's just me okay hello five ish hosts <laughs> to touch on the golden globes I was thrilled to see Paul Giamatti and Div- Divine Joy Randolph win for the holdovers it's a very good movie that excels simply because of the acting. I hope they both reap Oscar bids, and I'm crossing my fingers. Randolph wins. If Dominic Sessa could somehow push his way into the already crowded supporting actor race, it would be amazing. I was disappointed Barbie didn't take actress and picture in the musical comedy categories for two reasons. The first, because, well, it's amazing. The second, because I hated poor things so much. I was so excited for it, but geez, I found it terrible for reasons I won't rant about here. Yeah, I don't want to watch it it just look i mean the cast looks great like you know i mean you got ruffalo in there i love ruffalo you know mm-hmm. i should be happy to see him in just about anything i mean william right. william Poe, he's fantastic even emma stone i mean she's a good actress but the movie just looks yeah. weird yeah. <laughs> it just looked like i would either I would either end up being like entranced by it or just so weirded out I would get bored. And my guess is I would probably get so weirded out I get bored. So, but that's not I I yeah I, it's probably yeah whatever. So <laughs> give me Barbie any day. Mm-hmm. Uh, as for the church on Ruby Road, I really liked it. Historically, I found myself not to be a big fan of the first full story of a doctor, but the show was firing on all cylinders here. Got to waste no time jumping into the role, and I'm loving every moment of it. Just looking at the publicity photos released of Ruby Sunday, I had this fear she was just going to be another Rose Tyler, which wouldn't be something I'd like. Instead, Gibson is great. I really look forward to peeling back the layers of her story. Take care, Erin. Thank you, Aaron, Aaron, and thank you, Shalane. Yes. Agree on all counts. So. Yes. All right. Well, moving on to this week's main topic. Now that it is finally completed we now have all six seasons of the crown Mm -hmm. out there for everyone's enjoyment of course we talked about first season when it first came out but obviously with a lot has happened between now and then oh yes um like five more seasons Uh, (laughs) um and it's covered a lot of history uh it sure has so um you know, it's um, it, it's been quite the ride. 
I I will give it that. Mm-hmm. It is de- it has definitely been something to watch unfold, especially considering what has happened in real life with the royal family since this series started. I mean, it started in you know in 2016, and you know at that point, um. You know, um, you know, William and, and Catherine had been married for a while and had popped out a few kids. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, eventually Harry would, you know, meet his wife and they would have their kids and all the fallout that's come with that. You know, and then Prince Philip dies. Um, and then, you know, the Queen has her platinum jubilee and then the Queen passes and we now have the the coronation and a new king, you know. Um, so it's been quite fascinating to watch, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> knowing what has gone on in real life, especially in the later seasons, like once Diana comes into the picture, um, and um, you know everything that happens with her and eventually her death, which. You know, I was not old enough to remember all the, you know, the the early stuff of her marriage to Charles, uh, you know, and the birth of of, uh, William and Harry, um, because I wasn't born yet. (laughs) William and I are actually not that far apart in age, though. (laughs) So, (laughs) and I, yeah, because I think when was William born? Was he born in early 80s? Yeah, he he was he was born in June of eighty two. Okay, so so yeah, about like the time that my mom he is he was born about the time my mom was getting pregnant with me. So, <laughs> and I was born in seventy nine. So yeah, <laughs> not yeah. too far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you know Harry came along in eighty four. So Four. yeah, so I was about around five. Kindergarten age when youngest was born. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I would have been one <laughs> in some change, so. Um, so yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So a lot of the historical stuff that happens before that, we just kind of have to rely on as far as uh, you know how they decide to portray these events right. um yeah you know, uh because you know some of a lot of this stuff uh you know a lot of the um a lot of what has occurred in, within the royal the royal family um is public knowledge for better for worse right yeah some of it is um you know, they're releasing statements or being out in public at events. So they're, you know, people see them and they hear them, they make public speeches, that sort of thing. But even at not say, not necessarily public events, but things like, uh, you know, state dinners or birthday parties <laughs> or weddings right. or stuff, mm-hmm. you know, when it comes to the Royals, even the most, you know, even people that they consider their closest friends can quickly get paid can, off and turn back. They yeah. quickly have very loose lips. Yes. So, um, it, it's a it's a shame that uh, you know people are like that that they're willing to betray someone that that they consider a friend, if not a family member, because sometimes it's not friends. Sometimes mm-hmm. it's your own family that betrays you. Granted. Yeah. You know, we're taking a lot of this information is based on what has been said by usually one person. So you're only getting one side of the story. Uh, So you'll have to take some things with a grain of salt. I I mean, I really appreciate Harry's, you know, brazen honesty and just willing to be, uh, you know, a literal and figuratively open book and, you know, Mm. open those wounds with his with his memoir which i i read last year um 
but that is only his and Megan's side of the story. Yeah. Right. Um, and we're, you know, especially, you know, even before Megan, we're, you know, relying on someone's memory of stuff that happened when he was a child. Childhood memories aren't necessarily the most accurate. Right. Uh, especially since Harry's also been open about the fact that, you know, he had a drinking and a drug problem and that can affect the memory as the memory. well. Yeah. Um, so uh, you do have to take a lot of that with uh, with a grain of salt. But at the same time, it's information we would not otherwise have, uh, uh-huh. which is a blessing and a curse. Right. Yeah. I, it, they, you know, the, the thing that carries the thread that carries through this entire series is the crown's relationship with their subjects mm-hmm. and the balance that comes with that, um, you know, not just as her majesty you know, Queen Elizabeth II as the monarch for as long as she was, and obviously now it's passed on to Charles, but her family, you know, her husband, her kids, her grandkids, uh, her siblings, um, you know, none of them were asked to be brought into this circus, really, of Uh life. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, whether they move, whether they marry into it or not, most of these people come from aristocracy anyway, so they they mm-hmm. already are aware of, you know, uh, a a, le- a certain level of or a certain set of expectations for someone in that class. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the Prince Philip, obviously, he married the future Queen of England, but he was a prince and a you know he came from a very you know high level <laughs> high level background himself you know he comes from the you know the greek royalty you know the royalty of greece mm-hmm. um so you know he knew what he was getting into to a point he knew what he was signing up for yeah you know you know to a point but still it's kind of this idea of yeah, you because know, he married Elizabeth before she was queen. Mm-hmm. So they Knowing had that the possibility was going to happen, but then all of a sudden, right, it but went, then, bam. <laughs> yeah, it's there's there, it's the possibility and a more likely eventuality, and then it's actually happening. Right, two yeah. totally different things. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, there, there, there is no dry run. No, <laughs> no drill. No. No, and and even that you know that's that's something that Charles, you know, uh, has has mentioned. You know, knowing that he was going to be king eventually, he's like it's like the world's longest like internship or something. You know? Right. Yeah. Uh, but still, once you're in it, even though you think you know exactly what to expect, you really don't know until you're in it. Is is the thing. Uh, right. Yeah, and it's not like having a kid or getting a puppy up. or something. You know, it's like, oh yeah, I know exactly what this is going to entail. No, you don't. Right. Nope. <laughs> uh, so you know, I have to. I have. To, I. I personally, obviously, as an American, we're very more removed <laughs> from this than the people that live, you know, are either in England or in one of the Commonwealths, you know, Australia or Canada or whatever. Um, it, yeah, I'm sure it's different being a subject of the, of the monarchy and having that connection. Yeah. We, we Americans who drive on the right side of the road and, you know, drink our tea cold with a ton of sugar in it. Um, yeah. <laughs> and a lemon. <laughs> Sweet tea. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, we're not quite as, uh, we don't have that attachment, uh, except for those of us that are just fascinated with everything Uh from across the pond. (laughs) Um, but, um, yeah, I, I do, I do give them, uh, you know, they're, 
events and things that, that they are portrayed throughout these seasons and i'm like really and then you mm-hmm. know stuff that happened in real life where you're kind of like really but then right. it's like i gotta give them just a little bit of grace it's like you know you didn't ask to be born into this <laughs> you know mm-hmm. <laughs> uh yeah especially for you know william and harry um being of our generation mm-hmm. you know the 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 late gen xers and the elder millennials uh, mm-hmm. of growing up in a time period where like our childhood was you know you get we spent our childhood you know still playing outside with our friends and you know going to mm-hmm. going to school and things like that but you know as we um you know, as we're reaching adulthood, things like the internet are becoming a more common thing, and that changes the way that we interact with the world. Right. And the majority of our mistakes for us elders, mm-hmm. there's no much, there's really no video or photographic evidence. Yes. But with the case of the royals, that's a little bit different. And mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And as technology advances, it's a hell of a lot easier for them to do something and it for it to spread like wildfire. And for it to never disappear. Even though you think it does, it can come back yes. and rear its ugly head. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. So um so yeah, it's it's quite the um it's it's quite the ride um mm-hmm. you know both for what happens in uh you know in uh the UK you know and in England and um the rest of the world mm-hmm. um you know we learned that um supposedly <laughs> um the uh it would have been elizabeth's grandmother i think grandmother and grandfather that um supposedly caught wind of what was happening with the um, the Russians, okay, Tsar Nicholas and Alexandria mm-hmm. and everything that was happening. They had the opportunity potentially to save them, essentially, and bring them to to uh to England, and mm-hmm. um they decided not to. Mm. And we all know what happened to the the the. The, the uh, Russian royals, yeah, stayed it because they stayed in Russia. We've all seen mm-hmm. Anastasia. Uh, yep. So, um, which who knows how history might have changed if, yeah, so, you know Nicholas and Alexandria and all their kids had not been executed. Right. Uh, yeah. So. Um, you know, we also see the uh, the queen meet with uh, President Kennedy, um, and their and their reaction to uh, his assassination and how they decide to um, uh, follow uh, mourning protocol. Uh, they're they're in England uh, for the for the president. Uh, of course, you know the the queen has two more children after she becomes queen. So, <laughs> so and poor Princess Margaret gets uh-huh. the like second fiddle. So, yep. Which really sucks, uh, <laughs> right? So. I mean, it's nice to know that the queen changed, but you would have thought that you know, hey. Maybe yeah. I should change this now after having a daughter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Margaret just, 
you know, being second in line mm-hmm. and, you know, quickly because, uh, well, not second in line, but, you know, I mean, once your sister starts pumping out children, Margaret immediately falls back. Right. Um, but, you know, it, it's, it's unfortunate how those, and we, we saw this, you know, or at least heard about it from Harry, how those that are really far back in line for the throne get treated with such a firm hand in their life choices, like as far as who they marry Mm -hmm. and things like that. Um, When, I mean, yeah, you know, there's obviously public perception, blah, 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 whatever. But it's not going to have any effect on the lineage of the crown. (laughs) So it's like, what you would think those further back in line could get a bit more wiggle room when it comes to Mm. making life choices. Yes. Um, You've been watching King Ralph a little bit too much. The likelihood of that scenario ever happening. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, Exactly. Exactly. So, um, um, in uh, season three, we get our our cast change, our first major cast change. Um, you know, now with Olivia Coleman playing Her Majesty. Um, so, um, which she's wonderful. I love her. Yes, she is. Uh, <laughs> uh, we see the passing of of Winston Churchill. Um, um, we hear, we learn the story of, um, the town of Aberfan in Wales, where there was a horrific mudslide, uh, because the coal mine, because of the, the mining, the coal mining, it caused uh, essentially the, the ground to become unstable and caused, a, 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 a you know, essentially a, a, sl- a big old mudslide, um, that ended up going right into the town and uh, into the school. Uh, so a bunch of children died, which is pretty sad. So, yes. um, of course, uh, let's see. So, yeah, Olivia Coleman takes over playing Queen Elizabeth. Tobias Menzies comes in as Prince Philip. Hello, Bottom Carter comes in as Princess Margaret. <laughs> um, so, um, uh, uh, we learn about Prince Philip's mother, Princess Alice of Greece. Um, who did not have the best time after a political coup in Athens. So, um, uh, he, uh, the queen celebrates her silver jubilee. Um, and then season four, we get, um, Margaret Thatcher mm-hmm. as the Prime Minister, played by Gillian Anderson. Which I was really impressed with Gillian, actually. So. Yeah, she she does she did an awesome job. Yeah. Um, took a little getting used to because <laughs> mm-hmm. she almost does it a bit too well. So I was like, I like Gillian Anderson. And then she had to go and play Margaret Thatcher, who was like, she was an awful woman. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she was just like, oh, yeah. Not just as a prime minister. She was, a, I mean, she, so, yeah, yeah. she was not the best prime minister. Um, but, uh, but really, in general, she was she was awful, awful woman. So she is not um, remembered very well. So, yeah. uh-huh. <laughs> so even 
even though she's been played by some very well, yeah, very good actresses, obviously. Meryl Streep being another in the Iron Lady. Uh, mm-hmm. So, but you know, obviously Margaret Thatcher of the prime ministers that we've had, uh, or they've had, she is one that's remembered for better or for worse. So, um, and this is also the same time where Charles and Diana started dating. So, air quote very loosely here. Um, so, um, and then of course we get to the wedding, <laughs> wedding of Charles and Diana with the <coughs> very, very, very amazing replication of the dress. Yes. So, um, and it's it's. Yeah, you know, yeah. Everyone from the outside is like, "Oh, it's a fairy tale." Yeah, you know, it's amazing. Look, she's marrying. You know, she's marrying a prince. Uh, which you know, Diana. You know, she didn't come from royalty, but she was definitely upper class. Right. Um. You know, her her brother is an earl, so. <clears throat> Um, and of course, you know, Charles, which would, would much rather have been with Camilla. Um, right. But that was not happening. Um, uh, and then we get. <laughs> um, we get the. Uh, the uh, infamous story of. Um. Uh, uh, Michael Fagan, who mm-hmm. famously found a way to break into the palace and eventually found his way to the queen's bedroom. Yeah. Where he and the queen proceeded to have a chat where he could air his grievances as a member of the working class. <laughs> Um, yeah, that was that was quite the uh, um, quite the. I'd heard that story before. I don't remember, you know, when it actually happened, but I remember hearing the story before. And being like that's wild. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I broke into the palace and you know woke the queen up from a dead sleep and instead of just throwing him, you know, throwing him out to the the cops right away or uh, her her security team or whatever uh, uh, he, uh, she actually let him sit and chat because mm-hmm. <laughs> so, that's really what he wanted he just right. really wanted he wanted to feel like somebody higher up um uh, actually gave a crap. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, um, so there, uh, <laughs> I like the conversation between him and her, which I don't know how accurate it is or what actually happened because uh, the counter the, the queen and, and Mr. Fagan actually had was not that very long. Um, all right. But, you know, the queen's all like, well, what would you like me to do? And he's like, save us all from her. She's like, who? Thatcher. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. I'll get right on that. <laughs> I'm actually not popular. Sorry. <clears throat> um, so. Uh, then of course we get more of the, um, yeah, you know, the the early years of Charles and Diana's marriage and Diana's rocketing popularity with the people. Yes. Um, so we also learn about um, the, I believe they're cousins. Cousin, I think they're cousins. I don't know if like how removed or what, um, but there are a couple of 
offshoot cousin i think they're cousins of the family that um apparently suffered some from some mental health disorders because they don't ever flat out say like you know give any sort of diagnosis or anything but they were put in essentially an asylum because that's what they kind of did at the time and we're just kind of Never mentioned that there are these family members, so they're you know that you're just kind of sitting in this institution, just sitting around living until they die. So, oh. which unfortunately, I, again, I'm going to give the royal family some grace there because that's pretty much what just everybody who had the right did with any sort of family that suffered from, and you could be institutionalized for like the minorest of things yes like it doesn't have to be like you know super you know something like you know born with like a a, a physical disorder a mental disorder or both um you know if, if you look at like um like pamphlets and stuff from the early 20th century when institutions were like the go-to for mm -hmm. everything like you could be institutionalized if you had depression or anxiety or <laughs> right <laughs> yeah it didn't have to be anything like you know what we would consider today maybe more severe mental illnesses like schizophrenia or right you know being born with like down syndrome or something you know just any sort, any sort of you seem to veer off the normal, normalcy path. I'm doing very big air quotes here. Normalcy right. path. They would throw you an institution and just be like, "Bye, mm -hmm. <laughs> you can't be a functional Not our member of society." Anymore. So we're going to remove you from society, which mm -hmm. is bullshit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, but uh, yeah it's a shame that what you know what happened to these two ladies uh but um you know uh, unfortunately it is also a sign of the of the times mm -hmm. so um so uh and of course Charles and Dale's uh, marriage is a falling apart. Yep. So by the time we get to season five with another cast change with what will be our final uh, cast for the rest of the series with Imelda Staunton as Queen Elizabeth II, Jonathan Price as Prince Philip, Dominic West as Prince Charles, Elizabeth Debicki as Princess Diana, award-winning Elizabeth yes. e. for her portrayal as Princess Diana, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> Claudia Harrison as Princess Anne, uh, Leslie Manville as Princess Margaret, uh, Marsha Warren as the Queen Mother, Olivia Williams as Camilla, um, and then we we get some uh, some time jumps. So William and Harry are played by a number of different boys, depending on what year we're talking about. So, um, but the adult royals at that point are set as far as their actors are concerned. Um. So. Um. This is during the time period where um, <laughs> then the queen uh, is uh, celebrating her 40th anniversary on the throne. She gives a speech. Um, so this is public. Uh, so it was a public speech where she talks about a newest horribleness, mm -hmm. uh, which is essentially the worst year of her entire life. <laughs> so... Um. Oh. 
Um, and, you know, actually pretty much most of her kids marriages are falling apart actually. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yep. Anne's not having that good of a time. Or all having that good of a time. Andrew and Edward aren't having that good of a time. Cause, time, yeah. Because I mean, of of the two, obviously Charles and Diana were the bigger, right, more notable. But um, uh, Andrew, is it Andrew and Fergie, Fergie, their marriage was falling apart about the same time. Right, because um, they got married about the same time. Because uh, both of their daughters are about the the same age, um, so they're a little younger than than you and I and William and Harry. Right, mm-hmm. uh, but not by a whole lot. No. Uh, so there's a fire at Windsor Castle. <laughs> yep, I vaguely remember that. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then. Uh, you know, Charles and Diana officially separate mm-hmm. and still separated for quite a while. Um, and we get the revenge dress. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Another great replication by the costume yeah. designers. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh huh. Uh, of course, we get the uh. Uh, infamous interview with with Diana by Martin Martin Bashir, mm-hmm. um, who you know Diana once kind of quote unquote free, not quite legally free yet because she and Charles are only separated and they're separated for quite a while before they're actually legally divorced. Right. They stay separated for what like like almost two years or something like that, like a year and a half. Yeah, I think the Queen was. Really hedging her bets and holding out hope that they could reconcile. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. It was it was quite a while, but technically Diana is free. Uh, right. Has a, bit, has a bit more freedom, so, you know, she takes advantage of it and, you know, starts. Yeah, she does. I mean, she was always very out there doing charitable work, but she becomes even right. more. Yes, uh, more so, and doing things, doing things that the royals might find unnatural uh, for mm-hmm. some member of the royal family. You know, like uh, walking through field, uh, you know, land where there's known to be landmines, <laughs> or right. actually Explosive. touching and hugging and getting down and close with AIDS patients. <laughs> Right. Who knows? Yes. Treating him like human beings. What a novel concept. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh so, but of course, yeah, the Diana's interview. Uh I think we all even if you've not watched the whole thing, I think most people at least know the 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 her famous quote of there were three in this marriage, so it was a bit crowded. Yeah. So, <laughs> Um, and then Charles and Diana become legally divorced, which leads us into the final season. Uh-huh. Diana meets um, Dodi Al Fayed, um, tries to spend as much time with her sons as possible. Um, of course, there's some infamous photographs taken of Diana. Um, while in Saint Tropez, uh, yeah. among other, among other places, you know the shot of her on the back of the yacht, hanging off the uh, sitting on the diving board with her legs dangling over, looking rather sad, actually, mm-hmm. rather morose. Uh, is a, another infamous uh, photograph, unfortunately. Um, mm-hmm. you know, and the boys are you know getting older, able to recognize and understand better what's going on um and then uh of course we know how diana's story ends unfortunately with a high speed chase from the paparazzi into a underground tunnel in paris where her vehicle crashes and diana and dodie are killed 
Um, and then we get the aftermath of that, which they, you know, we really only get that in one episode here. Right. If you've seen The Queen with Helen Mirren, yeah, it comes to the same thing in a longer stretch of time. So, <laughs> which if you've not seen it, I highly recommend it. Dame Helen Mirren does a fantastic job playing. She sure Queen. does. Of course, you know, I'm a little biased, too, because got a certain Welshman playing Tony Blair. Uh, yeah. <laughs> one of three times he plays said to prime minister if you've not seen it's a very loose trilogy of uh it's called uh the, like the special relationship i can't remember what the other movie is called and then the the, the queen but michael sheen plays tony blair in all three films uh-huh. uh, so but yeah the, the queen gives you way more to work with as far as the aftermath of of diana's death um, and how the royal family did and did not acknowledge how it was affecting both the, the individual family members, but also the the public. Right. Um, so, and we get, you know, Imelda Staunton giving her, uh, you know, her version of the Queen's uh, televised speech that she gave eventually like the day before diana's funeral Mm -hmm. uh, after being so like tight-lipped for weeks yeah Um, so and then pretty much after that is you know we get a little bit of a time jump um you know especially as as uh the boys get older we see william um and harry trying to figure out life without their mother william is you know <laughs> becoming very popular with the girls um which while he is at eaton is not that big of a problem because he's you know kind of away <laughs> right so, yeah <laughs> but uh once he decides to uh, once he goes to university, uh, not so much. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, and they and they play a little fast and loose with with William and Catherine's uh, right. meeting and when they when they first met, when they officially decide to start dating, that sort of thing, because they've they've been open about it to a point, but. Um, yeah, the, they tend to be very private, especially compared to Harry and Meghan. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, again, we get, um, you know, the relationship between the the Queen and Tony Blair. Uh, we get this lovely flashback episode of uh, the end of the war um, where... Uh, Elizabeth and Margaret go out to celebrate VE Day. Uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. Which was a true story. So Margaret, apparently Margaret spilled the beans uh, on that. So, yeah, we don't know exactly what was said, but they did sneak out of the palace and go out and, and party with all the GIs. <laughs> so. so, I mean, you can't blame them. Yeah. Uh, and then we get the passing of the Queen Mother, uh, and then we get the passing of of of, of Margaret. Um, yeah, unfortunately, and Margaret. Oh my goodness, they did uh-huh. sad to watch. Kind of how well they showed. I mean, they condensed it for time, uh, but yeah, uh-huh. once Margaret had that first stroke, it just yeah, the dominoes yeah. were falling for her and. Yeah, she had multiple strokes. She did burn her feet in the bathtub with too hot water because she could not feel it. Um, so yeah, her health deteriorated, you know, quickly. Not as quickly as it's shown in the show, but it was once it once that train left the station, there was no there was no stopping it. Unfortunately, right. Uh-huh. Um. So and then we end with. 
2005 when Charles finally gets to marry Camilla. And um, this is you know, where they were intending the show to end, but because of what happened right. in the time uh, because of um, if we had not had the pandemic, the show could have ended sooner and we probably would have missed out on some of this, which oh, yeah. you know, in a way is kind of a you know, blessing and a curse um, that they were able to, to get that buffer so that they were able to add the ending that we do have in this, which is you know, bringing back both Olivia and Claire as their respective you know, eras to steal from Taylor Swift. Mm-hmm. Uh, eras of the queen's reign um as uh the queen is looking back uh you know at her at her time um as um you know she's looking at turning 80 obviously prince philip is a few years older than her so the idea of the planning of their eventual funerals um is a topic that needs that needs to be addressed um mm-hmm. especially after losing the queen mother and princess margaret uh right so although we know the the actually the queen mother's funeral had been planned for quite a while because they use some of hers for diana because <laughs> she's like wait a minute that's my plan for my funeral <laughs> so, um but we see philip uh you know talking with people and showing them the the uh the vehicle that he wants to be as hers which they did use um so and then we get the you know beautiful scene of Amelda in um the you know the the the, the chapel or whatever you can call it I, I know they've got fancy words for all those different rooms and stuff um with a, a version of the the coffin that was laid in state after her majesty passed that people came to visit um so um and that's it so yeah i think i think all this is i like what they did Yes, I like I like what they did as far as you know nods to both of their funerals imagery that we will rec- you know we would recognize, right? Uh, for those of us that, that paid attention to the things, um, it was weird seeing all the stuff with Diana, especially her death, because I re- I oh, remember yeah. that. I do too. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, one... I was I was fourteen, but yeah. I I mean, that's something that sticks with you when, especially when it comes across on international national news. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It was hard. (laughs) It was was just, it was so surreal to Mm -hmm. just watch it play out. Cause it's like, I know what's coming. Right. And I'm still not like prepared for it, even though it's uh-huh. been, you know, more than 20 years. <laughs> so more than 20, well, however yeah. many years it is now. So it'll be, yeah. well, it'll be 30 years in a few years. So, mm-hmm. well, and, and I didn't know too when I first watched this that Dodie was seeing someone else besides Diana at the same time. And it's just yeah, like, I didn't oh, either. Oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Again, I don't know how much they are, you know, playing with the the timeline, but my guess is, considering the Fiads were socially known, mm-hmm. that if Doty had been with some, you know, been seeing someone else, and it was probably serious, people would have known, right? At least in their social circles. So I can imagine that that was, you know. How much of Dodie's father being facetious, <laughs> being well, being just a just a pushy matchmaker, that too uh, is 
you know. I mean, I know he and other people are convinced that Diana was somehow assassinated by the queen. Yeah, no. <laughs> Sorry. Mm. No. I know the royals, the royals have done some really, like, you know, shady and not very nice things and made some poor choices throughout their time, but I don't see them arranging something like this as a possibility. <laughs> so, um, especially considering even here in the U.S., our our paparazzi is bad in some places. Mm-hmm. I know the U.K. paparazzi, they're uh, their own dragon and are really bad. The, the tabloids over there, I know, are really, really bad. But we've had cases where celebrities you know like los angeles have crashed their cars because they're being tailed by right. people taking pictures of them thankfully nobody's you know been seriously injured or killed but it has happened so um i mean honestly the relate the the relationship that the the royals have with the the news again i'm doing very loose big air quotes here news yeah. In England is it's a toxic relationship. <laughs> yeah. Honestly. You know. Uh again, especially based on some of the things that Harry talks about in his book. It's 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 like it's a blessing and a curse to have that much uh influence on what the public season hears mm -hmm. um is yeah it's it's toxic it's really toxic so uh yeah and then people are all like well you know that's what they, that's what they get for being famous again they were born into it it's not like they're like one day they were like oh yeah i'm gonna make sure everybody knows my name and i get chased around by people with cameras yeah it's one thing if you're like you know an actor and you become famous and suddenly people don't want to leave you alone um, right but at the same time it's like some celebrities that figure out how to make it work you know yeah. as annoying you know, as annoying as it can be they understand that that's it's part of the package and they figured out how to make it work Mm -hmm. But not everybody can. But I think it comes down to a personality thing, I'm sure. Um, so, but... Yeah, I'm kind of sad it's over, but at the same time, it's like, ah, I'm kind of okay with where they left it. Mm -hmm. oh. Do you think the queen was going to abd abdicate? And I, change her mind? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so either. I think she, I think with her, you know, just has she, just as it happened. I think she's just like, mm -hmm. I'm here till my last breath. Mm hmm. And she wasn't kidding. No, no, she wasn't. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she, that's so it's what well, she ultimately, you know, when she's having kind of the internal battle with herself, with her other, you know, younger counterparts you know and it's like yeah, you know, the the speech she made when she became queen you know whether my life be long or short right um you know she was like i'm gonna you know devote my devote my life to this job that she's given her and i mean her life ended up being very long oh yeah and you know she said till her last day and she was not kidding. I mean, she was literally <laughs> meeting with the then new prime minister. Right. Two days before she died. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. 
I mean, we talked about this when we talked about the when we talked about the queen after she passed. Like, you know, I remember seeing the pictures of like, oh, look, here's the queen meeting the new because like at that point that England was on prime minister like number three for the yeah. year right. or whatever because yeah. uh, everything that happened with Brexit was just it was like a rotating door of prime ministers. Yes, um, and, and then that and, lady didn't even stay prime minister pool that to, long. <laughs> yeah. And the, and the pool to see how long they're going to last before another one comes in. Exactly. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the lady that she met with wasn't even prime minister six months later. Uh, right. Yeah, I think she barely lasted, what, a month? <laughs> yeah, something like that. If that. I'm pretty sure it was a different prime minister that was at the Queen's funeral. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, but it's like, you know. I remember seeing the photos of the queen in her usual, you know, the room where she meets pretty much everybody with her, with her, you know, her black handbag and matching shoes and Mm -hmm. and floral dress and looking ever much like the queen. And so, you know, then even now people have been like, yeah, she's going to be dead in like 48 hours. I'd be like, what are you nuts? (laughs) Right. Yeah. But nope. (laughs) She, she called it. She called yep. it when she was crowned. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so. But, yeah. Now we've got Charles for better for mm-hmm. worse. So, again, yeah. we're, not, we're not subject, so it doesn't affect us any. But, no. Yeah. England is one of our closest friends. Yes. Supposed and, to be. and we can sympathize, so you guys can vent. We listen. <laughs> Yes. You let us vent, you listen. <laughs> Even it's mm-hmm. <exchange. laughs> Yeah. It's like we will we will gladly listen to your listen to your uh your uh quibbles <laughs> if you listen to listen yeah. to ours. So yeah. oh. Ah, deal. That's the other one. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. It's 2003, and then Special Relationships 2010, and then the crown for the queen is well after that. No, oh, queen is also 2006. So it's a... Yeah, because I mean, the Britain was one of the first ones to like come running for, you know, come running after September 11th. And I was like, what, right. you, what can I do to help? Exactly. <laughs> you know? Yep. Uh, well, and then at the changing of the guards, then playing the Star Spangled Banner mm-hmm. as, uh, you know, for those Americans who were overseas at that time in solidarity, that I can still remember sitting and watching that and just having chills. Mm-hmm. And goosebumps mm-hmm. seeing that happen. Mm-hmm. Yep. So it's been it's been interesting. Like I said, mm-hmm. you can, you know, I've seen various YouTube videos of you know the Crown. What did they What did they get right? What did they get wrong? Um. You know what is speculate? You know what's purely speculation. <laughs> mm-hmm. So it's like, you know, you watch it for the entertainment. Really, right? Don't take it as the Bible of actual history, except for the stuff that you know happened again, happened publicly that we know. You know what was said. It was it was captured on tape by someone. Um, but, um, you know, you just have to, just kind of have to accept it as what it is, as what it is, where it's just, it's a, it's really good storytelling. It's fantastic casting. Um, I saw a video somewhere where they claim that, um, Elizabeth was, didn't sound anything like Diana. Since mm-hmm. when? What, are you, what Diana are you listening to? I think she right. Uh, both the, the gal that played the younger Diana, and 
Elizabeth, you know, obviously she did a good enough job. She's keep winning awards for this portrayal of Diana. I think she's a she's a pretty good <laughs> portrayal yeah. of Diana. So mm -hmm. she yeah. looks it and sounds it. She's got the body language down. Um. So I I, I think Abelda Staunton did a fantastic job as you know the older version of her majesty um mm -hmm. so um william catherine not bad harry looks wise eh, they could have done a little better yeah but, you know what are you gonna do yeah uh, you can only do so much because william and harry half of their genetics are diana's so right mm -hmm. <laughs> As far as finding somebody who looks like them, not the easiest when you mm. don't have genetics to work with. So. Yep. <laughs> uh, so yeah, but if you're if you're a fan of the Royals, um, you know, obviously you've got the crown. Um, obviously there's a lot of lots of BD out there. Um. Yeah, like I said, if you've not seen The Queen, watch it. Mm. Um, I know Diana's been portrayed a, a number of different times um, in various forms. Um, I will say Kristen Stewart's portrayal of Diana, really good, although the movie Spencer is weird. Because mm -hmm. it's not... It's it, it's more psychological <laughs> than mm -hmm. <laughs> than just like a straight up like biopic, <laughs> right? Um, although if you like that, yeah, you know, why not? I would, I would, I would say so. Um, mm -hmm. You know, um, so, um, but. Um, um, yeah. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Yeah, I know Naomi Watts played her in a film, um, which I think is supposed to be halfway decent. So, mm -hmm. um, so of course there's Harry's book. If you've not read Harry's book, all right, I, re I would recommend reading it. And are listening to the audio version. Harry reads the the audio version, so you get it oh, straight from straight from the prince's mouth. All right. Oh, uh, and sometimes that makes all the difference because reading it versus hearing, you can at least get the tone a little bit mm -hmm. more. Yeah, the interpretation is a little bit easier to understand. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There's so we need we. One of these episodes, we should probably do like a things we've read to read, like a recent reading list of yeah. recommendations. So yeah, I'd be I'd be down for that. Yeah. So uh, uh, add it to the list. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> Our ever growing it's, list. It goes on the list. It goes on the list. So. Yeah, that's kind of. Kind of it for the crown. So, mm -hmm. Dems the Dems the story. That, that, yep. That's that's all she wrote, folks. So at least until somebody decides to do something else. <laughs> all right. So. We need to do an update. <laughs> yeah. I mean, considering where it ended, I mean, 2005. Right. Is... And we're almost 20 years, I hate to say it, we're almost 20 years away from that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's like, you know, obviously, yeah. I mean, it wouldn't necessarily be following the queen. Right. Other than getting into her diamond jubilee at 60 years. Mm-hmm. Uh, London hosting the Olympics. Right. Um, you know, uh, William and Catherine getting married. Right. Uh, 
and them being part of of all of that uh the, the diamond jubilee celebrations and then them starting to to pop out kids uh mm-hmm. <laughs> so we get our next royals in line yep um and then brexit mhm the lazy susan of prime ministers yep uh, Round and round and round they go where it stops, no one knows. Mm-hmm. Maybe uh, or maybe not the fiasco of Prince Andrew and him getting stripped of his titles. Yeah, <laughs> we don't talk about Andrew. No, uh, but I'm, I'm, you know, quasi. Somebody's gonna there. make a movie. Somebody's gonna make a yeah. movie about all of that. Yeah, that Andrew was supposedly involved in. <laughs> mm-hmm. but I don't think necessarily it's gonna be Andrew focused, but he'll be part of it. Yeah, uh, you know, somebody is is, is just raring to, to to make something out of all that. Now those documents have been released. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know the death of Prince Philip, the Queen's Diamond Jubilee, and then her passing. You know, obviously right. and May, Harry and Meghan's. Wedding and everything that happened with them. But we've got, you know, Harry's book, their interview with Oprah, <laughs> their little mini series that was on Netflix. On Netflix? Is there a mini series on Netflix or is it on like the behind the scenes when like I can't moving remember. and stuff? I can't remember if it was on Netflix. I know that there was a, they had a, a series on Apple TV about mental health. Right. That they were involved in. Because I remember watching that. But they're like little mini documentary. I can't remember what streaming service. I think it was Netflix. Because they've, they've made a deal with Netflix to produce mm-hmm. stuff. So I'm pretty sure. Yeah. It's um. So, yeah, I mean, they could do more, but by the time you get to, you know, the mid 2000s, like we were saying with technology and the Internet and social media, we kind of don't need people to remind us because we were able to live it like right when it happened. Right. Yeah. Stuff just can immediately go online and just take off. Mm-hmm. So so yeah. Interesting. But that's the thing, is that that's the the kind of the thing with the that ties into the overall theme of the entire series is their relationship with the public and how that's evolved or not evolved. In some cases, you know, we see Charles more than once talking about modernization and the old guard just kind of puts her heels in the ground like, no, mm-hmm. mother, she has, yeah, <laughs> she was a silly old bent, but she had, and she had, yeah. uh, like all old ladies, uh, <laughs> uh, so. Yeah, for better or for worse, they're modernizing whether they want to or not, because otherwise they're just gonna get left behind. Yeah. Um, and I, I, you know, I've, you know, like I said, I'm not a constituent, so I don't have a dog in this fight. But, um, you know, I think that the I think the royals could have a place, can continue to have a place in society, but. Mm-hmm. It 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 needs it needs some tweaking, yeah. Oh, because yeah, I think it's I think it's great what they do as far as like their charitable stuff is concerned. Yeah, a lot of the things that they help shine a light on would otherwise get lost in the weeds. Like, damn, if we could get a royal to be like, hey, check out this nonprofit with ours, <laughs> right. you know. Yeah. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Like, even if it's a lower tier royal, like, you know, 
One of, right. one, of uh, one of one of one of Edward's girls, you know. <laughs> right. Come on, Fergie and be a, you know, Beatrice. <laughs> yeah. Fergie, come on, get your girls going. Um uh, you know. <laughs> so they've done uh they've done they've done some good things. So I I, I think I think that that's the job that they can continue to do is use their notoriety mm-hmm. for better or worse and relationship with the media for better or for worse to shed light on causes and organizations that otherwise would not get attention. You know, especially on, on I mean, obviously the, you have the obvious things like environmental animal, you know, making sure that animals are not becoming extinct. You know, we know that, you know, Prince Philip, I mean, he started the World Wildlife Foundation. So, right. Uh, <laughs> um, but even the stuff that they're doing now, you know, I know with uh, William and Catherine, um, especially Catherine, or for both of them, mental health has been a big thing. Um, and Harry and Meghan were involved with that before they left the country. Um mm-hmm. And still are, hence the the mini series that was on Apple TV, um, and uh, I know Catherine especially maternal and child mental welfare is a yeah. important thing for her. You know, uh, making sure that mothers are getting the support they need as they transition into this extremely hard job. <laughs> you know, yeah, <laughs> uh-huh. being a- and the struggles that could come with that uh, and making sure that, you know, if they're doing well, then their children, you know, their, their children are going to thrive better and start off in life better too. So, you know, it's, a, it's not all cutting ribbons at train stations. No. Like some people might think. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. I mean, they still do that sometimes uh, put plaques up at, at, museums and that sort of thing but you know it's not just that so anywho any more thoughts nope i think we've covered them all okay all right well if any of our listeners have any thoughts about the crown or the royal family as a whole um any of all that stuff you can send us feedback or Email address is fiveishmangirls at gmail.com, or you can go to our website, which is the fiveishmangirls.com, where you can connect with all of our various social media accounts, which you can send us messages on or tweet us or at us or whatever the kids are doing these days. Uh, you can do that. Um, there's also links to the Goodreads book club, so you can go join in the discussion and vote in the poll when there is one um Mm -hmm. and um if you would like to financially support us you can do that a number of ways we have ko-fi so you can just send us whatever change you got in your virtual pocket um just a a single time uh, donation you can do that if you want to become a regular supporter you can do that on patreon um the link to that is there and if you want a little something something in return uh we do have merch on redbubble so you can buy stuff and we do get a little commission from that so we appreciate all the support there and then of course as we're saying our own nonprofit, fangirls give back uh we do have a paypal donation so if you want to just donate outright you know, it's getting tax season. You itemize. Need to make some donations to get, you know, get that on your on your taxes for credits. We are we are recognized as a uh, a five hundred c three charity, so you would be able to claim that on your on your uh, taxes uh, if you itemize. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. so you could do that via via the PayPal link, um, but, and we have our Amazon wish list if you want to purchase any of the stuffs that will help us in the future. So that's it. 
I think I've gotten back on this bicycle that is podcasting. It was a little wobbly last week. I'm so sorry, folks, about that. <laughs> I thought I was just going to you know, come back from two weeks off and just be like, ah, we're podcasting again. Apparently not. Uh, <laughs> apparently some stuff I got and forgotten. So. Mm-hmm. But I think we're back on the horse. Uh, yeah. As it were. So. Alrighty then. Well, with that, we shall sign off for this week. This is Sally from Wisconsin saying good evening. And this is Rachel in Indianapolis, Indiana. You know when I miss the most? The Corgis. <laughs> Six seasons of Corgis. <laughs> <There's a cat. laughs> mm-hmm. Thank you, our five-ish fam, for joining us on this week's Geeky Journey. If you enjoyed the show, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review. Stay connected with us on our website, thefiveishfangirls.com, and follow us on most social media with at fiveishfangirls. Plus, check out our nonprofit, Fangirls Give Back, to see how we're making a positive impact in our community. Until next time, stay nerdy and let the squee continue. <laughs>